What's up, everybody? B Mason, built by B Mason. Look, this is episode four of the Titleist Restoration video. Now, I know a lot of y'all have been hitting me up in my inbox on Instagram asking me, hey, B Mason, when are you going to finish the Titleist Restoration video? Did it go well? Must didn't go well. You haven't done anything yet. No, actually, I just didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. But now I do, so now I'm going to finish the video off. So, with that said, roll the intro. Let's go. All right, y'all, I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna get right into it. So, as you can see right here, well, let's, before we do anything, let's backtrack a little bit. So, this all started, I had some old Titleist tour models that somebody uh, sold to me for little or nothing. The cool thing about these blades is they were used to win like the 1989 Oakland Open or something like that. Somebody won a tournament with these. So, I think it's cool somebody won a tournament with these. So. Uh, that's a little cool history about these. So what I did was I, I decided, I was like, oh, this would be a good restoration project because they was okay, but they went in great shape. So I thought, yeah, this would be a cool restoration project for myself. I just wanted to do it for myself. Like I'm not gonna sell them. I love history behind clubs, but I don't hoard clubs. So really, this is the only other set I got besides my uh, my mirrors that I play with every day. So. Uh, I decided to restore them. So like you can see, I went through the whole process. If you if you guys haven't watched the video, go back, watch one, two, and three, all parts, part one, part two, part three, uh, as I guide you through how to do a restoration. Uh, just to backtrack and give you guys some backstory. I took these, they had some nicks in them. I stripped them down to the to the raw finish. Uh, I sent, I, uh, I buffed out the, well, grinded out the nicks and dings. Then I did a really good buff job on them. And then I, uh, it's a whole process. Go back and watch, um, go back and watch one, two, and three. Cause uh, to really do this right, you have to get the nicks out. Then you have to buff it out. Then you have to, sometimes you have to grind the stuff out. Then you buff it again. Then what you do is you take them and send them off and they get uh, copper and nickel plated. Then when they get copper and nickel plated, they come back to me. I blast the face. I, I blast the face, I send them back to get chrome. It's a whole process. Like restoration not easy nor cheap. So if you ever think about doing a restoration, just keep that in mind. Like it takes time and it's, it can get expensive. But this was a personal project and I went ahead and did them. Uh, these have fresh new chrome on them. And let me see if I can get this off. These have fresh new chromes on them. The face is done. I mean, they back looking pristine again, you know? So uh, if you, you only see half of them up here and I'm finna get into, I'm finna get into that now. Um, so the reason I haven't done anything because I didn't know what I wanted to do with them because I got my gamers and like, even though I'm a club builder, I don't believe in just having like a thousand sets of clubs laying around the house. That's not what I do. That's called a hoarder. So if you got some gamers, it's cool to have like one or two more sets. So what I decided to do with the tour models is I'm creating a short set. Now, I know you probably like, you spend all that time doing that. Why are you making a short set? Well, if I make a short set, I'll probably actually want to play them because with a short set, I can take that out with my buddies when I don't want to Sorry, my watch going off. I can take that out with my buddies when I don't want to like be in full like go mode and I want to have some beers and, and take some shots and bet some money and do some dumb stuff. I can take my short set out with my buddies. And I also too, with a short set, if you got a course that you play all the time, like you play this course over and over and over, or you live in an area where you don't have a lot of courses and you have to play the same course over and over, well, it's cool to have a short set because what you can do is you can take that set, you can play from the ladies' tees, you can play from the members' tees, you can play up. And what it's going to force you to do is start really looking at different shots and playing a different course and using your mind a little bit more. Like, what I plan on doing is I'm going to take this short set and I'm going to take it out to my home course and I'm going to play from the ladies' tees and just get a different perspective 
about the game, you know, uh, you, you won't be able to, I won't be able to hit driver because I'm playing a, a short set, but I am adding something special into this set that I built that's going to make me want to play it even more, but I'll get into that. So uh, what we have for the build now is we have the five, we have the seven, we have the nine, and we have the pitching wedge. And I, this, I found this, luckily ran up on it, a Titleist Forge sand wedge that I'm adding to the mix as well. Now this hasn't been restored and I'm not gonna restore it because I don't feel like it. All I'm gonna do is polish it up real good and uh, let that be that. I'm, I might blast the face too. I don't know, I'm gonna polish it up and blast the face. Now, I wanna tell y'all something about uh, when you get into grinding, grinding on wedges and stuff like that. Right now, this thing has a finish on it. The finish is not great, but it has a finish on it. Whenever you put this thing on a grind wheel, you're taking the finish off. So when you take the finish off, if you don't take care of these things and clean them and keep them oiled up, they're gonna rust. It's, it's inevitable, it's like, it's gonna happen. So sometimes like, uh, you know, I, have a, I might have a client who want me to put a grind, a certain grind on a wedge, I have to let them know like, hey, this grind that I'm putting on here, yeah, it's gonna be great, but it's gonna take the finish off and this thing is gonna rust. Are you okay with it rust, rusting? You know, like you have to inform your people about what's going on. They might not like that. Give them an example like, if you don't take care of it, this is what it's gonna look like. Uh, some people will actually be like, oh no, I don't want that. So, you know, they'll, they'll bow out, you know. So you just have to be transparent when you're talking to people about what you're doing with their clubs. Like some people like me and like other people, we don't care. We just want the club to do what we want to do and we can take care of it and keep it oiled up and keep it from rusting. But whenever you grind the finish off, it's going to rust. Ain't no way around. It's going to rust. Like the pros do it all the time, but they don't care because – they get new wedges every week, you know, so it doesn't matter to them. But, you know, to us everyday golfers and the normal consumer, they might not want that. So you need to definitely check with them and, and let them know what's going to happen. Now, some people are like, well, can you grind it and then, like, make it where it don't rust? Uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty expensive. I got to grind it, strip everything off of it, then I got to put it back on it. So that means I have to put a copper and nickel on it, or maybe you don't want copper, but nickel, I got a nickel plated, then I got a chrome plated. That gets expensive. So the more you educate people, the better, you know, <laughs> especially if you're gonna try to do this uh, on not a big scale, but you're gonna try to do this for a profit, definitely educate people. Not gonna get too far into that. This is about the Titleist restoration bill, cause I'm finna finish this baby off. In my last video, y'all gonna see me taking these babies out and striking them. So let's talk about it. We talked about what we're gonna do. I'm doing the, I'm starting at the five. I'm doing all the odds. I'm gonna come down and do the pitching wedge and I'm gonna do the sand wedge. Now, let's talk about it. This is exact model. Sometimes you gotta do research. I got my research right here. This is exact model is the 1985 tour models. Uh, they feature the round muscle back merged into a thin top line. If anybody know anything about me by now, I love the thin top lines. I cannot stand a fat top line. Perfect club for me, cause I love the thin top line. It has the tour model inscribed uh, at the bottom towards the, uh, towards the top line. This thing came in two different versions and the version that I have is pretty hard to find. Uh, this is the version with no, uh, stars on it it's another version that has stars going along the uh, scoring line this doesn't have that and i don't really like those stars because they they distract me so uh i like this version very hard to find these uh you you can catch a couple of them floating around but yeah it's hard to find so this the one that doesn't have the stars on the scoring line uh, it has the two stripes on the hosel i like that too and uh, yeah, so 1985 Titleist Tour models. Uh, I'm gonna take these babies back to their original <laughs> loss, cause it's a short set, so it doesn't matter. So the five iron is gonna be 30 degrees. The uh, seven is gonna be 37 degrees. The nine is gonna be 45. That's basically like a pitching wedge today. <laughs> uh, and the pitching wedge is gonna be 49. 
And the sand wedge is going to be 54, but I'm going to bend it to 55 because I play all my sand wedges at 55. So that's what we're going to do with these. I play mid-sized grips. Grips are getting very expensive now. Uh, so I normally play multi-compound. Uh, I'm deciding to do something a little different. I'm still going to go with mid-sized, but I'm going to go with the Lampkins. Uh, this light Lampkin version of Tour Velvet. So that's what I'm going to do. We're doing the Lampkins, man. I think you can get the Lampkins for like $5.49, something like that, $5.60. Try Lampkin. I, I, I rock with Lampkin, so that's what we're doing. Uh, for the shafts, we're going to do the Modus. I love Modus. I have so many Modus laying around my shop, but <laughs> we're going to do the Modus uh, NS Pro Modus 3, the Tour 120X. That's what we're doing. I mean, 120S, the stills. Because I play X sometimes, but sometimes I play still too. I just adjust. If, when I don't want to swing hard, <laughs> I just play still. So we're doing we're doing these, the modus. Uh, this is going to get tricky because these are used. So I'm going to have to do some masterful work about making sure the weight and, and the stiffness and, and everything is correct. So... Now, now we actually gonna get into a bill. You saw the restoration, but the next, the next two, two, three videos, you'll actually see how I. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, <laughs> you'll see how I put this together. It should be good. I think it's gonna work out. I got faith. I got faith. It's gonna work out. Um, we're doing the board ferals. I'm always doing the board ferals. I just think they got amazing, beautiful ferals, and that's what I'm doing. Now, what I'm gonna add to this set, you're gonna love this. I'm gonna add three wood, and it's a real wood, yeah. So, and it has a Aldola <laughs> rip shaft on it, graphite. This is cool because this is a wood that I restored. It was in bad shape, and I restored it, and I just been keeping it around. I have taken it out to the course, and here's a bunch of times I love to see people reaction when they see me pull out an actual wood. But then when they see me hit it, they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, this thing can do some damage. All I got to do with this is put a grip on it, and it's going to be good. It's going to be good to go. And uh, we're going to add this to the set. And uh, that's going to be our set. I haven't decided what putter I'm going to put with it yet. I'll figure that out later. But we're definitely going to add this Wilson, the Four Master. That's what we're doing. We're going to add the Ford Master uh, to this set, and then we'll decide what kind of putter we're going to do. I got a, I got a couple of putters I need to restore. I don't really like restoring putters. Look, man, y'all go check out Kyle at the Golf Garage or, or like NorCal Putters or somebody. You got to realize and learn what's your thing. Like, I like fitting. I like building. I like restoring irons, blades, preferably. And uh, I like specking and making sure people gap properly. But like the putters, yeah. I even sent a put. I even sent some of my putters off to those guys. So y'all go check them out. That's a shameless plug because I, I like them, and uh, I sent them some stuff before. So y'all go y'all go check them out. But other than that, that's it. We are gonna put this thing together. The next video you'll see is me in the shop figuring out how I'm gonna do this, and uh. It's going to be great, and you guys get to go along for the ride. I think I think the next video will be me putting it together, uh, half of that, and then the other, the second video will be me finishing off, and then the third video will be me taking these out to the course with some of my buddies, drinking a lot of beer and a lot of shots, and whooping their ass. Sorry, YouTube like to demonetize people. Whooping their butt with these clubs and this old Wilson Ford Master. That's what we're gonna do. Hey man, y'all keep checking me out. Follow me on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, it's built by B Mason on Instagram. It's built by B Mason everywhere. Just Google built by B Mason. Um, it's a movement. We finna, I got some other super exciting news for you all coming down the line. I, I don't even think I can talk about it right now. I gotta wait, I gotta talk to my lawyer. But yeah, it's gonna be great. Uh, I'm taking a leap of faith and I'm gonna do something big, y'all. And y'all get to go along with me for the entire journey. So uh, here's the big things in the future. Uh, that's all I got for you all. Don't forget, 
like the video, subscribe, hit the bell notification when you want to be notified for new videos that I put out. I have like, I have recorded over 15 videos that I just need to edit. Uh, editing sucks, especially if you want to edit like I edit. I try to make these informative and entertaining. So uh, sometimes that takes time, but I'm getting better because I'm freeing up some things in my life which are gonna allow me to invest more into this. You're gonna be seeing a lot of this. <laughs> Not particularly like me sitting at a desk talking, but like, you know, a lot of golf shit stuff. A lot of golf stuff. <laughs> All right, man, I'm holla at y'all next time. Built by B. Mason. Peace. I don't need no college, cause I'm getting stupid amounts. Yeah, I'm getting stupid amounts, ayy So much that I'm losing the counts, ayy I'm a young boss in my state, yeah So I gotta stay in my town, ayy I think I'm staying around, ayy What is they talking about, ayy